this guy from Finland named Tvix. I think he like ran a Gradius website. He's like a pretty big deal. <laughs> I was scared of him. Yeah, he's like number one on the uh, Shmups forum uh, charts right now. What is <laughs> There's the... like 20 million. Oh, you're like looking up scores of this uh, game? I'm looking up scores. Oh, okay. That must be yeah, a lot he, of loops. Yeah, That's he looks gotta be loop 10, minimum. The game stops getting uh, harder type after one, 10. 20. Yeah, 10 5. Huh. Stage 5, loop 10. Pretty impressive. Stage 5 is probably the scariest one, actually. Yeah, ever since I started playing fighting games, I, I value consistency a lot now. I'd rather just, like, you know, accept a tiny mistake and keep going in the run and restart. Yeah, because a lot of times, uh, small mistakes usually nice. don't mess up unless it's, like, at, well, like a super critical point. the rest of the run is point. contingent upon it, right? Yeah. Ah, oh, okay, I dropped a gun there. Three columns here. Okay, whatever. That's just what I was going for. 66k minimum is pretty good. I'm not dancing in time with the, the voice clip though, because I can't hear my TV. Ah! Not keeping up with the zero scores here. Okay, I think I'm caught up. Missile should take down this one. Yeah, I gotta watch your missiles, because sometimes take out those red ones a bit soon. Yeah, I'm, I'm dancing around that generator to take out the guys surrounding it first. Like, I'm trying to milk the generator a, li a little bit, basically. Which is something I did to, like, every single one in <laughs> Gradius, the Gradius Galaxies, no death run. Ah, sometimes they just, like, run away off screen like that. And you gotta be careful when flying upwards. Slam into some bad guys. It's another reason why you always want to move downwards here. Um, in case I highlight this later, I was saying how buying more options doesn't help you kill the zero forces faster. It's about how fast you attack them, so missiles help more with an extra option. So that's why I'm always moving down to get my missiles to help out. And uh, that's why I buy speed ups so I can chase them around more effectively. I haven't really uh, figured out the, more points. Go ahead. Uh, would the regular bullets be better than the laser shot? No. Or is just Laser does same? better. Uh, Fire Blaster does really well on them, actually. Oh, oops, you don't want to get Mega Crashes in this game. You don't get points for enemies killed with that. Ah! I missed another guy. Wow. That would have been a reset if I was still 18. <laughs> So, yeah, this boss is really, really easy. Just like clump up all your options like this. Okay, maybe you leave like a lower one here for safety. Just like shoot a laser across. Your missile should have you covered from below here. Honestly, if you want more points, like you sit back here and you milk these little uh, Cheerios that the turrets spew out. But, you know, that's. That's like self-evident. I don't need. I don't need to demonstrate that. Like, of course, it's gonna get more points. And yeah, I could get. I could kill this boss faster by flying into the middle there. But otherwise, you just kind of chill in the middle here. Oh. <laughs> okay, so we don't have to sit through another one. Wow, I got 205 in in the other run that I thought was worse. But this one's a better demonstration, so I'll probably highlight this one. That's, yeah, there's a lot of variance in the, the Zero Spore section there. <laughs> okay, I guess I'll, I guess I can highlight that stage one, though. That was a good demonstration. Put that on YouTube later. Okay. So my friend Taibo's uh, coming out to town tomorrow, actually. Should see if we can uh, stream some of our two-player stuff that we worked on a long time ago. We figured out how to do this level, uh, like starting from no power-ups in two-player mode. <laughs> we figured out how to get all the power-ups on these screens and stuff. I think it might have involved an edit mode. Like at first we were like, oh, let's use like a mega crash. And 
and all this stuff. But then I realized, wait, why doesn't why don't we just get a tail gun or something? Yeah, I think Taibo also likes playing Type 2. So here's the good old unskippable cutscene. Uh, 235, I think, is standard. This is bringing back all these old memories for me. I haven't played this game in a while. <laughs> Certainly done any full runs. I guess this run is underway. <laughs> yeah, it's too bad you can't skip it after like so many times playing it. I know. It's it's only in here so the music syncs up, right? <laughs> it's so strange for Treasure to have an unskippable cutscene. Well, I guess a uh, alien soldier. <laughs> As unskippable cutscenes, if you could call them that. <laughs> there aren't like any long cutscenes or anything, but or much like story in the game itself. Really, who needs a uh, story in a shooter? You're a ship, and ship blows up forever. Yeah. The end. <laughs> Boy beats ship. Boy falls in love with ship. Ship blows up worlds. <laughs> Wait, what a... I'm supposed to buy a double, I'm pretty sure. Okay, we can fix this. <laughs> I think. <laughs> How many power-ups are left in this section? <laughs> okay, now the generator's closed. Now I can go in here. No, I don't have a double! I'm gonna do worse on this section now. Oh, in more ways than one. I killed that generator way early. Okay, so this is really important. You want to take your time destroying all the stuff here. Now, because if I make it to stage eight, it's going to remember what my stage two self did. So now when I get to stage eight, I have to outrace my stage two self. I also don't remember how to arrange my options at all. No, I can't get the guys up there now. I can't remember what shape I was supposed to do. It was something like... It's like a, it's kind of like an L shape. Holy smokes, I'm gonna have to go watch my old video tonight. Like, <laughs> I just can't seem to recall it right now. Pretty sure if I wasn't like talking and streaming and stuff, I could focus on it a little more. So I think this first force field I bought... No, it's not. I think I bought one of the starter stage two. Oh, what am I doing? Get lined up. Wow, oh, usually those guys don't get a second volley off. Like that, yeah. So, the game is really easy in Type 1. That's why I say, like, oh, this game's easy, it's like pretty easy for me to learn stuff. Well, I do play Type 1, which gets low points, but makes the game very easy to make it through, right? You know, kills bosses really effectively even though Type 3 and 4 also kill bosses very effectively. <laughs> like, they... The most obvious strength of Type 1 is, of course, like, oh, you can just, like, you know, drive back and forth like this, and now all your options are on top of each other for focus firepower. Well, Type 3 can, uh... They can, it's like the formation option shape from Gradius 3, and you just press R1 and they, like, expand outward. Maybe I'll play as them later. But you can also contract them inward, which means you can put them directly on top of your ship. So fo you can focus all your firepower as long as it's on top of your ship like this. And Type 4 is rotating options, where you hold down the button and they start spinning in one direction. When you let go, they stop. And when you click it again, they start spinning the other way. Well, actually, that's not directly it either. Um, for them to spin the other way, they go through a central point at the center of the Vic Viper. Like, they kind of go through in, like, an infinity shape. So basically, by type by tapping the R1 button slowly, your options will slowly cluster on top of your ship, focusing all your firepower. <laughs> so, Type 1 is not really... It's not the... It is still the best. <laughs> Yo! It's Niv! This makes my night. I'm sitting too far away from my chat to read it. Gotta have that viewer interactivity, dog. Maybe we'll play some Nuke Runner while listening to Perturbator when I crash and burn on this run. 
So here's the other fun part about Type 1 is I'm trying to... Yes! I'm trying to damage the boss with missiles, even though they only do a very small amount. But that is... Isn't that what Gradius is all about? Is damaging the boss with your missiles. <laughs> Shoot the core! Shoot it in the nuts! So I did that on purpose. Also, oh, Rhett, I've listened. Rhett, I've listened to that I Am the Night album like way too many times <laughs> since you've linked it to me. <laughs> that makes me so happy. <laughs> like, I got addicted like, to that fuck, album, I man. I had, yeah, I couldn't stop listening to it either. It's like perfect music for playing Netrunner, for sure. Just like puts me in that, you know gritty, no wireless 80s cyberpunk mode. <laughs> like, immediately. <laughs> oh no, what am I doing? No, we're gonna have a real match. No, not really. <laughs> Type 1 privilege. <laughs> oh, this thing is from Gradius 3. Gradius Twesia. show you guys a helpful trick if my force field runs out. Uh, if? No, I'll just do it. So notice how I'm like trying to squeeze between these two shots and it dings my force field. But uh, as soon as my force field dies, I'll be able to squeeze between them. Uh oh, not anymore, never mind. That stops working as soon as you accidentally destroy one core. Luckily I'm type 1, so it's no big deal. No boss is ever, ever, ever a problem. shape here. Something like yeah like that. Angry lasers. Uh-oh. So it's like my options are slightly the wrong spacing. Oops. That's also not how to fix them. Whatever. I can just like ignore what's happening. I can just fixate it on like my options aren't quite the right shape. Let me get them in the right shape so I can start fighting the boss. Okay, this boss is gonna die before it even finishes setting up, but I don't know if there's a way to milk it either, but yeah. Basically, uh, I figured out there's a spot like you wanna stay in this vertical column, like right here on the screen, and those vertical lasers like all support amiibos. I don't know what amiibos are. I haven't watched, I've watched about like grand total 60 seconds of E3. I don't, don't really care about what happens in gaming these days. <laughs> I mean if it weren't for Dark Souls and League of Legends and Diablo 3 I could say I don't play any games newer than 2005. Because I can't just ignore in the group too. Like, Okay, after I take these things out, I am going to switch to double. You also get bonus guys for taking these out quickly. It's probably not the fastest way. <laughs> this is the lazy way. I call this formation shape uh, reverse frontal assault, by the way. I got it from an episode of The A-Team. They like figured out where the bad guys were, probably in some like sea can by the docks or something, <laughs> like some warehouse on the docks, some warehouse, <laughs> a sea can inside a warehouse, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, they figured out where they were. And it's like, how are we gonna give it to him, Ace? How do we beat him? How about reverse frontal assault? Yeah, reverse frontal assault. <laughs> then next thing they know, they just like have this like makeshift armored car with like. <laughs> Like steel plates on the front and like these cheap like assault rifles mounted onto the sides. They're just like driving around shooting out of the windows <laughs> inside the warehouse at bad guys. <laughs> Obviously hitting nothing because they're the AT. So yeah, that's reverse frontal assault. <laughs> Similar shape to this, but rigid like, you know, it's easy to make. Well this is Basically, like, what formation options in Gradius 3 look like, just not this far forward. Um, I'm just gonna mess around with the 
shape here because I gotta get some firepower behind me. Ah, gotta watch where you fly. Also, this generator at the back does sometimes gives you extra guys. It didn't that time though. That's weird. Maybe I'm thinking of a different one. Yeah, I think I'm thinking of one in stage seven actually. <laughs> No, no! Okay. <laughs> Can't let that guy get away. So, uh, right up here is, uh, I don't have, like, the terminology for this, but it's a really funny, funny case of game design, I've noticed. I almost want to pause to talk about it, but, you know, here's, like, here's a barrier and you're going down into it! How, how do you use these new option types, like Gradius fashion, to get rid of it? You know? New, but now it's Gradius 5, we have new ways to shape your options, you know, Type 1 can make a funny shape and they basically go like that. Type 1 aims their guns down, Type 3 expands, Type 4 rotates and flies closer to it. But as you saw, I didn't do anything that pertained to options, I just fired missiles and the barrier blew up because it was actually pretty flimsy. So, <laughs> basically, you know, setting up something that looks required but is actually not really an obstacle and is very easy to overcome. I, I don't know if there's a codified name for that in the field of game design, but that's just the kind of stuff I like to notice and talk about in games. I don't think I killed that generator. Reset! I should switch to laser here when I'm able. So here's some big cores. I'm also gonna... There we go! Got that. Wait, uh, can you even blow that thing up if you don't have any power-ups? Um, like, no missiles, no nothing? That's a good question. I haven't tried that, really. A little distracted there, sorry. <laughs> that was a near-death situation. Luckily, this game has, like, an even tinier hitbox than Ikuruga does. Oh no! It's the option-stealing fish! Option stealing fish has been juked, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my death was not. I actually don't specifically recall that situation though. I didn't know that I couldn't squeeze between the top of the screen and those lasers. So as you can see, like, how do I recover from this? Well, this is a pretty low stress uh, part of the stage, thankfully. Oh wow, I didn't hit that thing to first priority for me is almost always getting my speed ups back because as you can see my options don't reach very far right now the spacing between your options is dictated by how much how many speed ups you have so this is paramount on type 1 because you know the more speed ups you have the more reach you have and also if you can move faster you can draw new shapes and change the way your options are set up more quickly not exactly a high speed player on Gradius, I actually really like the max speed in this game. It feels similar to uh, two speed ups in Gradius Galaxies, which is my preferred speed. This game and uh, I guess the first one and Life Force are the only ones where there's like a really fine degree of speed when buying speed ups. Like Gradius Galaxies is so obnoxious, it's like there's initial speed which is unusable, it's a complete crawl. One speed, pointless. Two speed ups, pretty good. A little hard to have fine motion in some areas, but oh well. And then three speed ups is too fast, except for uh, well, except for this. Actually, I think you can do the speed section on two speed ups in uh, stage eight in that game. Ah, gotta farm all the little rings for ten points each. Uh, <laughs> anyway, and then four speed ups in Gradius Galaxies is a joke. It's it's like you know, well, I guess like. Too fast to control is a recurring joke in Gradius, but it's certainly true in that game. And I mean, you can go that fast in Gradius 1 and Life Force, but you have to buy like 10 or 12 or 16 speed ups to get up there. So it's funny how this game has both. It has like a lot of speed ups, but a lot of speed ups to buy, I think five, but the max speed in this game is the speed I'm at right now, and it's not that fast. It's 
quite easy to control. And also, you can go back to your initial speed by buying speed up again, which was something you had to, <laughs> you had to give up a lot to have that ability in Gradius 3. You had to give up your, your special slot to be able to go down a speed. So I guess that's planning ahead if you really, really don't like the stage 7, the hyperspeed stage. That, whoa, I don't even see how I died there. Are there any sections that it would actually benefit like changing speeds or is it just one there is, actually. is best for There's, everything? I go max speed everywhere except at the beginning of stage 6 I go back to initial speed and uh, I buy 4 speed ups to get a certain spacing with my options. Because max speed like stretches them out a little bit too far. And after you destroy the core, you can fly through the middle like that. Okay, let me get caught up on chat while we're watching this. Hey, GDO! <laughs> My favorite kind of open. <laughs> Yo, I need to make Nib a mod. How would I do that? Okay, I think it's done. Ah, I gotta go close them Facebook tabs. Next boss death. Next boss death. Okay, so this is stage four. The, uh, oops, gotta keep buying speed ups. What am I doing? Okay. Uh, I could have squeezed between those, but <laughs> not really feeling up for it right now. Okay, I gotta get a laser. These, uh,. So yeah, those big core enemies that were in the corridors of stage 3 there are like the recurring boss in Gradius 1 for NES. Like the boss of every level. Known as Big Core, which just keeps getting like made into bigger and dumber versions in every Gradius game. It's, that's why there's a chibi looking plushie, you know. Big Core is ac the actual mascot of the Gradius series. You know. The lovable companion. Uh, and these guys are random. Yeah, these biological looking enemies here were a boss from Gradius 2, which have been given, you know, they've been werewolfified for those who play Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Boss demotion status. I think there's a page on TV Tropes about this. So yeah, I just did reverse frontal assault again. Basically you just do a little loop backwards and you get a formation shape, except based behind the ship. Actually, I'm not really going to stick with any shape here, because you'll see the stage is a living, breathing thing, and it's going to move around a lot. So I'm going to move around a lot, too. Yeah, it's pretty much all cliche at this point. you got to fly into something. Well, when you make the fifth game in the Gradius series, it's going to be cliche. <laughs> but Treasure made it, so the gameplay is just absolutely... Rad Radical. Just so completely Power Beast awesome. Uh, yeah, this always happens. Like, you can do double or laser in this stage. Basically, double gives you more coverage, and I'm more likely to get these little, like, green dots that fly around that are worth 10 points each. But I have less firepower, so you see how I, like, almost ran out of room in that section. <laughs> okay, don't destroy this yet. Yeah, wait for the arms to come out. Now they get destroyed, you get more green things as a reward. See? <laughs> yeah, that's my rhetoric. Most people say, that's dangerous, Shiner! What are you doing? That's bad stuff flying around. No, that's a reward! It gives points! Uh, at least it's better than the green goo from that one stage. Oh yeah, something green. Stage 6 is actually called something green. Oh, that reminds me, I should get my friend Starman on here. He loves Gradius games. He's gonna start doing a Gradius Let's Play on something awful, actually. He wants me to contribute content. He was just like, yeah, I want you to like come out of retirement and do your uh, Gradius Galaxy's No Death Run again. And I'm like, what? I'm not a, I'm not a puppet for your amusement <laughs> here, buddy. <laughs> also, Let's Plays are obsolete. I'm streaming. But I'm gonna try to help anyway. Because <laughs> he's my friend and I, you know, like having spotlight time. Okay, 
So in here, you want to like hide in here, try to keep your options close by. This option right above me is perfect because the double is shooting above me and the missile is shooting below me. Like it might seem hectic and stressful to fly into tiny areas in a Gradius game, but when you're type one, you just have to, that's why I like double and missile. Like I don't use edits because like I like knowing that missiles aim down and double aims up. So because I always know where all my options are, I always know what directions I'm shooting in and which which directions are covered as a result. Okay. Let's see if I remember how to do this stuff. So you wanna catch these guys in the tail. Um, kinda like that, but faster. I got greedy for the power up. I'm also supposed to be down there, not up here. This is gonna be awkward. Okay, get that thing, get the volcanoes. Volcanoes are on vaults, but volcanoes are on vaults. This is Gradius. Uh, biology right here. <laughs> okay. Probably should have let those shoot some green stuff. Okay. This is always a tight squeeze. I'm probably going to die here. Okay. Okay, that was good. We've got two worms. Probably should take out the bottom ones next time because the double will shoot more green stuff. So these regenerating walls are worth points, so I always like feel them up a little bit like that. Then I go through, uh, I'm mashing the power up button because it happens to be on force field, <laughs> thankfully. Okay, and this is why you want to be on double on this stage because now you can just shoot so much of the regenerating wall stuff. Uh, hang on, I'm a little nervous. I'm always nervous going through a regenerating wall because it might just like regenerate on top of you, you never know. Okay, so now I can start dragging a big long trail out to farm the entire level, this entire screen here. So you notice how my score counter is just going up constantly because I'm shooting a maximal amount of surface area of a regenerating wall here. Actually not anymore, because uh, yeah. The option closest to me, the one right above, is like directly in front. There's no more wall left. So yeah, I lost lost a few points there, but that was an okay shape. And then right here, you just kind of go like this. Oh wait, but you don't want to leave the power ups trapped inside. I really should map uh, shoot and missile to different buttons because I could just keep shooting. Like I'm worried that a missile will get trapped inside the. Uh, Regenerating walls and take out one of those amoebas that are worth points. Okay, so here you just follow the contour of the heart. So now look how all my options are hugging the heart here. And I can just like move up and down like this, and I'm constantly shooting at this uh, little warp thingy that, <laughs> that opens up the heart. It's basically like a shield. You have to destroy this little bumpy thing on the outside. And I think that I'm just also watching the, the lasers here. Yeah, orange ones are the ones that hurt you. Yeah, if you, if you don't quite fly close enough, your option will get trapped inside the bone and not actually shoot the ward, but that's fine. It's just like a safe, reliable way to do that part. Having double here is also not that big a deal. Oh, here we go. Volcanoes! Get them points! This is what Gradius is all about, just having a little break. St just stop fighting the boss altogether. Close here. <laughs> okay, here we go. Boss should be dead pretty soon. Pretty soon. Oh my goodness, really? So now we're gonna see that really pretty eyeball attack. It's really inspired by Radiant Silver Gun. This, yeah, that swirling pattern of lasers. Isn't that straight out of Radiant Silver Gun? Holy smokes, this boss isn't dead yet? I guess I usually fight with laser, that must be why. But yeah, that's that's the whole pattern. I mean, okay, die already! There! Okay, let's go close my Facebook tabs. It's getting in the way. <laughs> Let's play it's the greatest and purest art form. You joking me? Not even Retsu Prays, which are even worse. By making fun of the best efforts of other content creators. Pretty soon I'm gonna end up on Red Supreme, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, let's get switched to laser. Um, actually they don't 
They don't do the whole riffing anymore. Oh, really? <clears throat> no, they just do it for shitty uh, video games, because apparently people were idiots and went after the people they were riffing on. So they're like, nope, not doing that anymore. That, oh, that was really bad. Thought I could survive a few frames of that. Because I had a force field up and all. You know, playing this game while streaming is actually really fun because I'm a little bit distracted. My playing is a bit looser. <laughs> I also have the chance to talk. Oh no, I wasn't looking at my power up meter. Back to initial speed. Okay, it's easily fixed. Oh no, no, I wanted more speed here though. So you want to be able to. This is where the screen starts looping. Oh, I think I lost the power up there because I got greedy. Okay. So first priority is going to be laser, I think. Well, double is good too. You know, some punching power is good if you want to go forward, but I mean, double coverage for more points. Actually, the, the asteroids are kind of tough, so. Just like the laser to get the surefire points is always appreciated. Now I got a missile. Missile is just a bit of extra firepower, and again, gives that tendency to go down in this vertically looping section. Wonder if I can. Yeah, get in there from behind. Ah, oh, I didn't even see that bullet. This is what playing shmups is to me, is playing by feel. You know, I didn't see that bullet. I'm just supposed to move in intuitive ways. Or I could just pay better attention, I don't know. Still got a one life to spare. I'm doing good. What's that next extend, I wonder? Ah, what am I doing? I don't want options behind me. This is the fun and excitement of Type 1 right here. See the versatility of being able to squeeze through tiny areas and lose a bunch of points because I don't have a continuous laser like Type 2 or 4. <laughs> so what makes Type 3 better than Type 1? I'm kind of asking myself that, but I think I have an answer already. already. Um, honestly, Type 3 can reach the entire screen. Remember how I was saying they could expand and contract their options? I think you can just like reach the entire screen. Like if you if the ship is positioned in the middle, if Vic Viper is positioned in the middle, and you just hold R1 to unleash your options. I should also say that uh, R1 is not the default <laughs> option control button. That's just what I use. And sometimes I switch to R2 when my index finger gets sore, like it is now, because I spend like 90% of the my gameplay holding it down. Whoa, I lost my force field. Okay, yeah, you want laser here. Gotta be careful what you do in this boss fight. Of course, right now I'm just gonna shoot like crazy because, you know, destroying rocks gives points. It's the exciting way to play. You know, I could leave all these rocks alive and they would shield me from these mines that are going off, but it's fun. Also, the mines are only worth 120 points, which is the minimum score value you get from destroying anything in this game. So you might think, wait, wait, I can actively chase after the mines and destroy them before they blow up. Well, you don't get rewarded very well for doing that, so I don't do that. Uh, I'm actually just going to play it safe. I'm not going to get that power up. Okay, and when the boss goes from left to right one last time, that's when you want to start shooting less, because that's, that's their last pass. Oh. Now, you want as many rocks to be on screen as possible, because now shit gets real. Ugh, this boss. I love this boss. I hate this boss so fucking much. It took me a long time to figure out how to do this, but yeah, at first I thought, oh, I'm just gonna go like full cave mode and weave in between these bullets, but no, they're too fast. You can't do that. You're, you're not allowed. You have to move, like, the boss, like, aims at you as well, so you can't just, like, destroy the shields and then, uh hide in the middle, because those, those diamond bullets also go through walls. Well, it goes through the, the boss's own walls. That makes sense. So my options are behind me because the rocks can still uh, come from behind, and the big rocks, you got to watch out for the big rocks, because sometimes when they get destroyed, they like explode up and down, and like so new small rocks may blow you up unexpectedly. 
So I'm just gonna try to one cycle the boss here. I don't wanna have a farm fest. Ugh. Yeah, on easiest difficulty, they're the bullets are slow enough and there are so few of them that you actually can weave around inside them and it's really fun. Because you can just like shoot constantly and keep destroying the rocks for points and whatnot. Oh, okay, here comes here comes stage six. So I'll show off why I go to four speed ups.